This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Well, I recently received a question whether you can create texture maps in Substance Painter and use them in Keyshot. And the simple answer is yes you can. And that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, here we go. We're in uh, Keyshot and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take an object that I modeled in uh, Maya and it's going to be a very basic and simple cube. I UV'd it. Uh, we're going to go into Substance Painter. We're going to create um, texture maps for our cube and then we're going to export them so we can use them in Keyshot and uh, apply them in the material graph. Okay, so let's uh, start in Substance Painter. Here we go. Right guys, we're on Substance Painter. We're gonna go to File and New, and we are gonna leave this template at PBR Metal Rough, that's fine. We're gonna select the mesh, so I'm gonna go to uh, Select, and I'm gonna take my cube, and again, it's a, a simple basic cube that I created in Maya and uv so that's all. I'm gonna leave everything as is. Uh, I'm not gonna load any uh, maps because I haven't created any yet, and so we're just gonna hit OK and load up our cube, okay? Now, just to show you that our cube is actually here. There we go. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some very basic texture to it. And again, it's, this is not about the modeling and the texturing. This is about exporting the textures and using them in Keyshot, okay? Cool, so we got our cube. Uh, I need to bake my default maps first. So I'm gonna go down here to bake textures. I'm just gonna leave everything checked. We're not gonna use everything. I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna hit uh, bake. And as I do that, I will get some error messages down here because I don't have all the information to bake all the maps, but that's fine. Like I said, we're not gonna use all of them, okay? Gonna go back to shelf, and now I have my basic set of maps created, as you can see here, which is cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and apply a material into this layer map that we have right here, okay? So let's see what we got. We got this machinery looking material here and we're gonna just drag that in and drop that on top of our cube okay and as we do that we'll get something that looks like this all right now let's say we're done with texturing and we want to use these textures in Keyshot okay we're gonna right click on our object and we're gonna go to export textures now when we do that we get this menu that pops up and we have to fill in a couple of things First of all, it's going to ask us, okay, where do we want to export it to, all right? So what I'll do is I'll go to my desktop, I'll create a new folder here, and we'll just call it test, that's fine. So that's the location where we want them to be exported to. And then here in the configuration, we can choose what type of export we want. So do we want to export to use in V-Ray or do we want to use it in Unreal Engine, in Unity, or for example, and that's what we're going for today, in Keyshot. Now, once we select Keyshot, if I go over here, actually, I'm not gonna save it as PNG, but as JPEG, that's fine. So if I go over here, I will see that I got all these same options here and uh, we chose Keyshot, so we'll do that here as well. And once we do that, we get these maps, okay? So we're gonna go back to the Export tab. We got that all set up, and we're simply gonna hit Export. And it's a very quick, as you can see, and if we now open up that folder, and I'll just pull it in, it's on my other screen, we got these maps here, okay? So this is our uh, color diffuse map, this is our metallic map, our normal map, our reflection map, and our roughness map, okay? Just gonna drag that back onto the other screen. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna jump into Keyshot. Here we go. Okay guys, we're in Keyshot. We're gonna go to uh, File and New. We're gonna discard anything. We're gonna go to File and Import. And I'm gonna take the same cube that I used in Substance Painter and we're just gonna import that, there we go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna double click on the default material, which will bring us to the material tab, and then we're gonna tweak this material type, okay? Now, right now, it's set to advanced, and we want this to be a metallic paint type deal, okay? And then, with that selected, we're gonna go into the material graph. 
and you see that we now have a metallic paint set up here and we need to populate these slots with the maps that we have created in Substance Painter, okay? So I'm just gonna go over to my other screen to pick those up, hang on. Yep, they're now on my other screen and I have them selected. I'm just gonna drag them in and drop them right here, okay? And I'll just uh, stack them up so we can see them, okay? So these are all the maps created by Substance Painter based on uh, the fact that we told Substance Painter that we want to uh, use them in um, Keyshot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag these into the appropriate slots. Now this is absolutely not something that always works out perfectly. Sometimes you have to you know, uh, do that by trial and error. Sometimes it does work out. It kind of depends on what type of material you set up, okay? So we're gonna start with our color diffuse map here. We're gonna left click exactly in that little circle there. And then we're gonna hold our mouse and we're gonna drag that over to our base color and release that right there, like so. And as we do that, you can see that back there, and don't mind the fact that it looks weird, back there, we're starting to get some information, okay? Now, the next one in line is our roughness. Now, we don't have an option for roughness, but I'm gonna click on it, go over here, drop it somewhere in the middle, and as I do that and release, I get some options. And I'm gonna move down my mouse and see if we have something. Metal roughness, we'll use that, okay? All right, next one is reflection. Now, I don't really have an option for that, so let's see what we got. Again, I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle here. And uh, let's see, I'll go with, um, Metal coverage. That's exactly what I meant just now. Sometimes you have to be creative and try it. I'm gonna take my nor normal map here. I'm gonna drag that onto my bump. And then the last one I have is my metallic. And I'm gonna drag that one onto my metal color. Okay, so let's see what we got so far over here. It doesn't look too bad. We do need to tweak a little bit, so we're gonna Minimize that. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go into the texture tab. And then uh, under the mapping type, instead of box map, I'm gonna go with UV coordinates because this is a UV cube. And as I do that, you see that the layout looks totally different immediately after we do that, okay? Now, then we have the option to tweak as we normally do. For example, by going into the background, I'll take a different background here, and then I'll go into environment. We'll bring, let's say, this one in. And as you can see, immediately as we do that, it looks quite different, okay? Let's find something with a little bit more light in it, maybe even outdoor. Let's try, let's try that. Let's see if there's a big difference here. I'm just trying to look for something that will give us the same effect as Substance Painter. Uh, but that one was quite bright. And there's actually even an option to use the same one if you like. Um, that's getting pretty close, okay? Now you can see that that reflection works quite well. Uh, what we can do is uh, tweak that a little bit. Uh, let's see, we'll go to lighting and let's just bump up the overall quality a bit. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna activate global illumination, ground reflection. I'm gonna leave these two off. And then let's tweak that a little bit. Okay. Uh, just trying to see where the best place is to do something here. Okay. Now this is the image, I'm gonna to go to the editor and what we can do here is to add pins. So I'm just gonna click on add pin and we're just gonna move that a little bit. I was kind of hoping for a more, somewhat more dramatic effect. Not so much, but it's not too bad, okay? So what I'll do is I'll do a, uh, 
actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause the video. Here's the brightness. I'll pause the video and then I'll find uh, the best settings that is closest to what we have in Substance Painter. And I'll be back with you guys and explain to you what I did, okay? Okay guys, well this is gonna have to be it. Um, what I did basically is I just changed the uh, background by replacing it with a different HDRI image, okay? That's all there's to it. So hopefully this uh, tutorial helped you a little bit better to understand um, how to use uh, textures from Substance Painter. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions, let me know as always. If you want me to do a more advanced tutorial on this topic, where we have a more complex model and different textures, let me know. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.